Welcome back to another Spirit Island video. In this video, we're going to be beginning a new series where I talk about each individual spirit and then some changes that I would make. Now, before I get started, I want to mention that the developers and the playtesters did an excellent job on these spirits, and I, I'm not being overly critical. These are just some suggestions that I would make to better balance the spirit. We're going to start with Whirlwind, um, because I think this is one of the most balanced spirits in the entire game, and I think it would be, um, or I think this video would be probably shorter than the rest. Um, so there are a few things with Whirlwind that I do not like. And the main one is this. It's Gift of Windsped Steps. And this card says that target spirit may make one power, which says push or gather fast. If you target another spirit, they gain an energy. So as this, as, uh, this card is written, it is one of the best cards for Whirlwind. My only problem with it is Whirlwind always wants to take this card for itself. And as a result, you can never really give it out to other players. And um, you basically, you lose out on that potential. Now, you might say, well, why not you do it anyway? Well, if if Whirlwind gives this card out, it sacrifices Whirlwind's action economy um, pretty greatly. And usually Whirlwind takes more Blight um, and falls behind on its board if it's not taking this card for itself. Um, so basically, the most optimal way to play Whirlwind is to take this card always. So the way I would change that is I would turn... Gift of Windsped Steps into an Exaltation. And just to review what an Exaltation is, an Exaltation is a card that targets two different spirits. A good example would be Exaltation of Molten Stone, which says split one energy per fire between you and another spirit as evenly as possible. So basically, I would turn Windsped Steps into Exaltation of Windsped Steps. It, was, uh, it would basically target another spirit. That spirit makes one power slow to fast. And then you you may do likewise so it's definitely a strict buff to the card affecting two spirits rather than one but i think it would create more um co-op interactions and i also think it's okay if a support card is a little bit on the stronger end it costing one energy already um balances it quite a quite a bit um when you look at cards like Gift of Constancy, Nature's Connection, those those cards in the minor deck, those are really busted mainly because they're zero cost um, but yeah, so th that'd be my first change, um, Exaltation of Windsped Steps, and not so much as to balance the spirit, but more to create, um, more interesting interactions. Okay, so the next thing is I would add a fear onto Tempest of Leaves and Branches. Now, thematically, Whirlwind doesn't have much fear. I mean, that's, that's how the developers wanted to design the spirit. They only added, or they only have one single fear on the innate. There's no other fear across any of the other cards. And because of your special rule and your um, your innate, you're pushing invaders, which means you're stopping builds, which means you're generating less fear. Now, thematically, that's the direction they wanted to take it. But mechanically, when you play it, it, it feels, um, at least for me, frustrating when I play with this spirit on my team because I know that the Whirlwind player is going to be generating almost zero fear. And that means the spirit that I'm playing is going to have to pick up the slack. And that can be very frustrating. Now you might say, well, look at Starlight Green. These are other spirits that also don't generate fear. Why are you okay with these spirits? Well, the reason is, is both Starlight and Green, these spirits are still having the invaders build up on their board. And they also can tech majors uh, more consistently and earlier in the game. Whirlwind... Like I said, you're stopping builds, which means you're going to have less buildings on your board, which means the potential to generate that fear is far less. Um, now, I still love this spirit. This is one of my favorite spirits of the Horizon expansion. It's just, um, this is something that I think could be changed just slightly. And I think by doing that, uh, by changing that would be adding a fear onto Tempest. Tempest is already your weakest card. And um, it's a card I tend to forget quite a lot when I'm playing Whirlwind. So adding a fear on it, it makes thematic sense for the card. And uh, mechanically, it makes sense for the spirit. Now, the spirit is still going to have very little fear. Um, a change like that probably adds between two, I guess it's two to three fear total an entire game. So, I mean, it's very minimal. And I think it would also improve the playability of this card. So we've talked about two buffs. The first nerf that I would make is I would adjust G2. And remember, we have G1 here, we have G2, and we have um, our G3. I would change this energy on our G2 from 4, and I would make that 3 energy. Um, I find Whirlwind to have a surplus of energy 
uh, pretty much in every build that I play, and I play pretty much strict uh, bottom track. Um, you really don't need the four energy. The four energy is just it adds that extra cushion um, that allows the spirit to play more one costs and even majors while going straight bottom track. So the first thing I would do is just knock this to three energy. Um, my guess is most players won't notice the difference, um, but it would slightly force the player to play a little bit more tighter if you're going full enter, uh, full plays route, and um, it would restrict some of your drafts a little bit more. Now, when looking at the tracks, I think both tracks are fairly reasonable. Now, I do think bottom track is perfect. I think the jump from two to three is huge. I think the jump from three to this air is awesome. And then the air to the, the four plays is great. And then the four to the five like this. Do not change this. This is very balanced. Um, I Like I said, I think it's perfectly balanced. Now, top track is a little bit on the weaker end. So we know that Whirlwind is 0 one, one which means the spirit is going to be placing presence the least. And um, as a result, you need there to be massive increase in power level every time you place presence. And um, so, or l let me rephrase. So every time you place presence, you should feel like you're gaining advantage. Now, you don't do that, or you don't feel like that way when you jump from two to three. And that's because the sun is a supporting element. And um, I, I mean, it's technically primary, but um, you need more air than sun. So the sun tends to not matter in games that I play. So this just ends up being a dead spot. Um, now, the ways you can fix that is, well, one, you make the spot stronger. Or two, you make the spots next to it stronger, like very, very strong. So you can use this sun as a, um, essentially a turn for, I wouldn't say scaling, but it's a, it's a weaker spot on the track, but then you get a massive, massive payoff on the next spot. Well, as it's written, it's not like that because the jump from two to three is very minimal. So the jump from one to two, one to two is huge, right? That's, you're basically doubling your energy generation while the jump from two to three, you're not doubling it. You're increasing it by 0.5. And because you have so much energy off your G2 and your G1, you never really need three energy. You can just survive off the two energy. So how I would fix that is I would first leave the sun where it's at. I think it's okay to have this weak spot here, but that means this spot here, this three energy, needs to be better. So what I would do is I would get rid of the air on the four. And I would make this three energy plus I'm just going to put an a for the air so it'd be a three air so you'd have an, a three energy and you'd get the air and that would be huge because now once you have that sun air here you're going to be hitting at least one tier of this innate if you're playing at least one air card now if you play two air cards you can hit the tier two which is pretty huge um you'll be able to do that what is it like turn four i think basically turn four now the next thing that i would do is the jump from three to four is I mean, it's, it's barely noticeable. You don't really need four energy on the spirit, even if you're playing majors. Like I said, you have the, the G2 energy, you have the G1 energy, so there needs to be a, a larger jump. Um, now, I want to keep the spirit low complexity, right? The whole point, like we could definitely make the spirit way more interesting and create way more set of choices, but that would require us to turn it into a moderate complexity spirit. Examples would be like adding isolates. I think the spirit would be so cool to play with isolates. Um, stuff like uh, reclaim ones, move presence, all of that. Well, we can't add that. So really the only thing that we can add to create complexity, not complexity, um, to, to create power level on a low complexity spirit is adding elements. Or by having a massive jump on the track. And I think this is where we could do that. We will jump from three to five energy. And I think I can do that to five energy. Now the jump from three to five, I think would be very valuable um, because now once you're at five energy, like you're, you're set, right? You don't need to go any further than five. Um, your top track looks really good. You have a sun, then you go, then you go three air and then you hit that five. And I mean, I, I think at that point you're solid. Well, that means this spot here doesn't really have, um, you never really want the six energy. So I would just get rid of the spot. Like even if this 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 spot could say 10 energy and you still would never take it 
because um, the value of going from maybe one to two plays or two to three is far larger than the jump from five to ten energy, if that makes sense. Like the, the extra energy will never matter because you're already getting majors and you're already playing majors. So I would just completely get rid of the spot here. And I would have the spirit. Let's flip it over to the back side. I would have the spirit start with two sacred sites. Now, this would be the first spirit in the entire game that would do that. But I think um, it would be very cool to have the spirit start with two presents in the lowest mountain and two in the highest sands. So it would look like this, two on C3 and two on C6. And that would definitely improve the, the, um, the Tempest of Leaves and Branches. And honestly, it would pretty much... Uh, get rid of that little bit of a puzzle where it requires a sacred site. So maybe that's a reason not to make a change like this. But really, I, I want to make the tracks perfect. And um, as long as this spot exists, you'll never take it. As long as this top spot here is either a 5, even if it's a 4, you're still never going to take this last spot on top track. So I'd have the spirit start with, um, like I said, two sacred sites. Okay, so to recap, I would make Gift of Windsped Steps a Exaltation, targeting two spirits, yourself and another spirit. I would add a Fear on Tempest. I would subtract one energy from G2. I would then push the air forward on top track, and then I would change the four energy to a five energy. And then finally, I would get rid of the last spot on top track. Now, if I didn't want to make any of these changes and I wanted to just balance the spirit... The only change that I would do is I would get rid of the energy on G2. I think if you got rid of the energy on G2, you would tone down the power level just a little bit. And I think that would be a more, um, I think that'd be more in line with what the developers want in terms of power level. All these other changes, just um, more quality of life changes, more, more uh, synergy, slightly more fear, slightly more um, choice when choosing between top and bottom track. Because if this is a three air, now all of a sudden I'm thinking, well, maybe I can do builds like two plays, three air, and then jump down to three three plays. You know, stuff like that, which um, don't actually exist. Remember, you're a zero one one spirit, so you're placing presence the least. Looking at these tracks, like if I want to get to this four spot here, let's, let's see if I can copy and paste. There we go. If I want to get to that four spot, that's going to take me one, two, three, four, four turns. Now, you have to get the second play. Like, you can't, into high difficulty adversaries, you can't afford to be playing a single card play with majors and have that strategy work consistently. So, really, you're looking at one, two, three, four, and this is, so you're looking at at least five turns, and that means you're also going to need to reclaim. So that you're looking at six turns to get to this spot. And as you can see, that's why I kind of just get rid of this last spot here. You're never going to reach that because that would require at least seven turns. And um, on turn seven, instead of grabbing the six, you'd rather just grab this three energy or the three plays instead. So, um, all right. So if you guys like these types of videos, let me know in the comments. If you want to see more of these styles of videos, I'll, I'll make more of them. Um, Otherwise, if you like this video, like, subscribe for more content. I will see you guys in the next video.